Welcome. Today we're going to talk about the attributes of lean and agile organizational leadership, how to establish vision, guidance, and trust to unleash your enterprise's competitiveness. Uh, please visit my website to get all of my lean and agile briefings and videos, as well as my white papers on how to apply this to large enterprises, organizations, and agencies. I've been an IT government contractor for about three and a half decades. My background is in computer science and information systems. I'm a career systems and software engineering methodologist where I started with NASA's space station in the 1980s. And I wrote the first books on the ROI of CMMI and Agile methods. Let's begin with a rather infamous leadership quote by Lao Tzu about 1,500 years ago. He said, a leader is best when people barely knows he exists. When his work is done, his aim fulfilled, they will say, we did it ourselves. Uh, what this really means is that you're uh, unleashing other people's you know, leadership skills to solve their own problems and unleash their, their creative potential. Uh, today's leaders are faced with almost insurmountable challenges compared to those of Lao Tzu 1,500 years ago. Just the intense global competition, demanding customers, uh, intense rate of technological change, you know, reduced budgets, obsoleting technology skills, you know, overburdening legacy systems, poor IT security, long lead and cycle times, which place inordinate pressures on today's leaders and organizations. However, today's uh, global internet marketplace is unlike anything in, in human history with most of the world's 7 billion inhabitants uh, interconnected with one another on the internet and systems and, and, and organizations that must support billions of simultaneous end users. You know, new leadership approaches are needed to scale organizations to compete in the global marketplace. If the global internet marketplace of the 21st century wasn't challenging enough, the internet of things will place even greater challenges on leaders and organizations with tens of billions and perhaps trillions of devices and people interconnected on the world wide web, where it will place unprecedented challenge and cause mass business failure for those who cannot compete. Newton's third law certainly applies to today's organizations and organizational leaders, which states that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. As Ray Kurzweil predicted 20 years ago, that the exponential rate of technological change would have such great impacts on society and businesses at large, causing mass business failure, as we see in the statistics of the last 20 years. An onslaught of new leadership and management paradigms has emerged to help deal with these 21st century challenges. One of them is called agility or business agility, which is a property consisting of quickness, lightness, and ease of movement. Uh, it's basically to be able to respond to these pressures, quickly reprioritize, you know, through intense marketing, uh, customer interaction, and an evolutionary incremental and iterative fashion uh, to, to sustain business value. Some of these business values in, in include, as we've already mentioned, you know, to be iterative or incremental or evolutionary, to have some strategic agility, to be able to be quick and to be able to adapt to change as the market throws new challenges at leaders and organizations, meaning that your culture has to be agile, your leaders has to be agile, your innovation has to be agile and adaptable. Your, your resources have to be agile, your, your operations, your capital infrastructure, your organizational design, and, and certainly your information technology. Another way of saying the same thing is that your products, your organization, and your facilities or capital infrastructure have to be agile. That is, you have to have an agile you know, strategy, an agile culture. Your processes have to be agile. Your products and services themselves, the technology upon which your products and services are built, your, your IT infrastructure, your organizational design or hierarchy, and, and certainly your capital footprint, your building and your people, anything physical or, or capital intensive.
a closely interrelated and competing paradigm to the notion of agility or business agility is the notion of being lean, lean thinking, lean leadership, lean enterprises, which is a property consisting of thin, slim, and being extremely slender, being extremely customer focused with a sharp focus on business and market value, with economical planning and management free of excess waste, with just enough processes, documentation, and tools in order to adapt to changing market conditions. Lean values are based on competing on lead and cycle time or on internet time as they used to say in the 1990s being very customer centric pull versus push centric with a sharp focus on value and respect for people customers internal and external on, on continuous product and service flow on innovation relentless continuous improvement and of course servant leadership. Once again, key lean behaviors include competing on time, quality, business value, customer delight, uh, respecting your internal and external customer, not making things difficult upon them, you know, just continuous flow, no delays, fast feedback, talking to your customers to see if they're satisfied, uh, constant process improvement and taking action on those improvements, but most importantly, you know, fully integrated lean thinking at all levels of the organization. That brings us to the purpose of today's talk, which is lean and agile organizational level leadership, an act of leading, guiding, and coaching in lean and agile thinking, not traditional thinking, at the enterprise portfolio program project level and integrated in an aligned way uh, in order to achieve continuous product development flow, collaborate with your customers, prioritize your work, evolve your products and services, respond to change in order to achieve business value. Literally thousands of theories of leadership have emerged in the last century, but there is no unified theory of leadership in the 21st century. Early theories were that leaders were born, not made. Then there was a focus on situational and contingency leadership, culture change. But now the focus is on the individual, on motivation, on followership, and, and motivating teams uh, to be empowered to lead the organization from the bottom up. Let's examine a few popular models of lean and agile leadership that contain generous helpings of delegation, empowerment, and motivation. That is, 21st century organizational leaders have major roles in creating the visions and enablers to unleash these employee behaviors by establishing organic teams, simple rules, enabling autonomy, mastery, transparency, alignment to business objectives, continuous improvement, and individual competency. Let's examine an early model of Agile leadership by Sanjeev Augustine, which included key leadership behaviors of establishing guiding coalitions and communities of practice, establishing visions for teamwork and collaboration, and aligning them to business objectives, creating cultures of change, a sharp focus on value, building trust, uh, building on people's strengths rather than firing them for their weaknesses, and just continuous learning and continuous continuous process improvement. One of the most innovative and misunderstood theories of leadership in the 21st century is clearly Dan Pink's theory of motivation, which includes elements of purpose, autonomy, mastery, that is allowing ordinary employees to establish the organizational vision and goals, be responsible for their own time and resources, and just become continuous masters of their own destiny and letting them reach unprecedented levels of individual perfection. In contrast to Dan Pink's inward theory of leadership and motivation, Steve Denning modeled his radical leadership uh, model after the Apple Corporation with a sharp market focus on delighting clients, self-organizing teams, client-driven iterations, delivering value, radical transparency, continuous improvement, and soft skills like conversations and communication. Mary and Tom Poppendieck have created a lean leadership model among many other lean models that encourage leaders to focus on and enabling systems thinking that is uh, lean thinking across the organization a focus on technical excellence in terms of your products and your processes and your services reliable delivery relentless improvement great people and, and aligning your governance to your portfolios to your programs and to your teams. 
Jurgen Apello has an interesting model called Leadership 3.0, which is encouraging leaders to energize people to become leaders, uh, establishing and empowering teams with responsibility and authority, aligning those teams to the organizational goals, uh, encouraging people to, to think holistically and optimize the whole, you know, growing your structure and just continuously improve all aspects of the organization. One of the challenges of organizational leadership is a phenomenon known as cognitive blindness. Therefore, 360-degree leadership models have emerged, such as the Change Leadership Descriptor, Emotional Quotient Inventory, Leadership Versatility Index, Hogan 360. All of these models have a common attribute in that uh, people not only uh, self-assess their own leadership capability, but your entire team assesses your, uh, your leadership abilities, too, in order to get a well balanced view of your leadership attributes. Organizational leadership challenges also face those involved in buyer-supplier contract relationships in the public, private, and nonprofit sector. Modern leaders must focus on personal interactions, conversations, collaboration, continuous improvement, openness, customer delight, and cross-functional team over the traditional cost, schedule, technical performance, or iron triangle. New models are also emerging to help leaders, organization, and individuals with change management and process improvement, such as SWITCH, which uh, focuses on incremental and high-value improvements, enlisting the, the help of influential people to help drive the change, uh, empowering people, individuals at the lowest level of the rung to drive the change, you know, focusing on the positive and, and empathy, as well as methods to reduce cognitive blindness when, when selecting high-value changes. Leadership also has a lot of common sense practices like just treating people with respect and dignity, not micromanaging them, delegating decision and power, you know, focusing on the vision, not detail requirements, lots of conversations and consensus and personal mastery, focusing on business value versus scope, relationships, collaboration, incrementalism. What you don't see here are heavy processes, hundreds of statistics and thousands of documents. Sort of a, a corollary to total quality management is total organizational management, also known as portfolio management in the early 21st century. That is, we now recognize the necessity to link visions and missions and strategy and objectives to the portfolios, the operations, the programs, and the resources, such as PMI's portfolio management standard. The only challenge is they don't say how, nor are they proven methods with proven results for doing so. A popular form of total organizational management in the early 21st century is something known as lean and agile portfolio management. Uh, here's a model called the Scaled Agile Framework. It's a single integrated portfolio management model for managing portfolios, large programs, the programs, and the teams. The notion is that you translate business objective into portfolio objective, establish the portfolio, set up your programs, set up your projects, uh, set up your teams, and, and with a day and weeks, teams actually start delivering value, which is aligned to business objectives. Here's another way of illustrating what we mean by total organizational management or lean and agile portfolio management. We now recognize that organizations are a composite of the strategy, the portfolios of operations, programs, projects, and teams. Uh, standards like PMI's portfolio management only focus on the portfolio management. Others focus on the strategy. Others focus on individual teams. But now models like SAFE are emerging to try to align the teams to the business objectives themselves. Popular models to help leaders manage the performance of their organizations, portfolios, programs, projects, and teams are things like the Iron Triangle, uh, such as the traditional Iron Triangle, which is in which your scope is fixed and your cost and time are variable, or the, the Agile Triangle, in which you're, we want you to compete on time and cost and make your scope variable. But Lean is trying to turn that upside down and, and make leaders focus on batch size, capacity, and time.
Two basic leadership metrics emerging in the 21st century for lean and agile organizational management are lead and cycle time. Think of lead time as all the, the great marketing ideas for to create new products and services. Think of cycle time as the engineering department and their limited capacity to actually begin working on those ideas. So that both clocks end when a new product or service actually makes it to market. So being able to compete on lead and cycle time is, is a key attribute leadership attribute of the 21st century. Other lean and agile leadership uh, measurements also uh, include measuring your strategic agility, your, your cultural agility, your process agility, your product and service agility, your technology agility, your IT infrastructure agility, and organization design agility, and capital infrastructure agility. Remember, lean and agile leadership is all about total organizational management and, and reducing the lead and, and cycle times of end-to-end -end process flow. If you haven't guessed by now, what we've tried, been trying to say over the last few slides is that lean and agile behaviors are key leadership attributes in the 21st century. Everything begins with lean and agile principles, very, very sharply focused priorities. You can't build everything, you know, simple, minimal, viable architectures and products, you know, modularized inter, uh, interfaces and microservices and end-to-end -end automation in order to serve uh, billions of end users, you know, simultaneously. Moving away from lean and agile thinking for just a minute, let's examine the results of this Dale Carnegie study of global leadership. The blue bars represent what employees value in their leaders. They value leaders who listen, respect them, appreciate them, and value their opinions. The red bars actually represent how well their leaders uh, lived up to their expectations. If you put this on a 360 degree integrator scale, the red bar would probably fall just a little bit. Sticking with the Dale Carnegie Global Leadership Study, the blue bars represent what people value in their leaders. They value leaders who are encouraging, appreciate them, praise them, are humble, are forgiving, compliment people, or are delicate, listen to them, and are optimistic. They don't like leaders who ignore them, are goal-oriented, focus on financial rewards, or are arrogant. Notice that all the pink bars are traditional leadership characteristics, while all the, the blue bars are lean and agile leadership characteristics. Characteristics. Organizations that have great organizational leadership have twice as many successful strategic initiatives, are three times more likely to be lean and agile, have twice as much alignment, twice as much empowerment, four times as much likely to use lean and agile portfolio management, and five times the return on investment at the project level. Once again, organizations with great organizational leadership have 6% better earnings before interest, taxes, and depreciation, 4% better return on equity, 8% better return on assets, 14% better return on investment, 36% better earnings, 12% better revenue, 7% better you know, performance against their industry in terms of earnings, and 4% better in revenues. This chart illustrates that the demand for lean and agile personnel has grown by two orders of magnitude in the U.S. public sector. The second chart actually shows that uh, great lean and agile organizational leaderships, products, services, the organizations, the portfolio management itself actually is correlated to high GDP and high GNP, while those that are, are locked in old traditional manufacturing and, and agricultural sectors are actually you know, trail in, in terms of GDP. Hopefully by now you've realized that great organizational leadership is not micromanaging or telling people what to do or outsmarting them. And it's not just about being nice to them and respecting them, but it's about total organizational management, total organizational leadership, flatter, bottoms up, visioning, delegating, lean and agile thinking, adapting to change, you know, smaller products and services to reduce lead and cycle time, emergence, conversations, you know, mastery and collaboration. Let's end with a quote by Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, Gandhi said, you must be the change you wish to see in the world. You must take responsibility for lean and agile thinking, for total organizational management, for delegating, empowering, and respecting. If you do those things, just like Lao Tzu, Lao Tzu said at the top of the brief, the people will say, 
we did it ourselves. Thank you for your time and patience up until this point. Please visit my website, davidfrico.com, to learn more about me, get my great lean and agile briefings, free videos, and white papers on how to apply these principles to large organizations in the public, private, and, and nonprofit sectors.